Hello, my name is Tom Revel, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, do a pipeline for next to nothing or free. So, kind of let's get started with this. So, let me just explain what I'm going to do here. I am going to be, I've built a, a quick file here, file here, which is uh, with a cube, um, a, what was it, what's this again, pipe, and a and a sphere and what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing showing you uh, or demonstrating how we can take this scene and how we can put it up to the web in a repository su uh, such as this one and then we're going to show I'm going to show you how I'm going to put this onto a website so let's gonna get started with that so currently what I'm going to show you today in essence is pipelines now many of us have kind of like been struggling with the idea of how do we kind of get other people informa our information with as little time, little time and effort um, put into it as we do so I am going to show you with these tools how you would do that so what I'm going to uh, so now I've kind of got this file here uh, now I'm going to save it save as and uh, I'm actually going to use a dummy uh, project here which is called test project git now I'm just going to save this here right now so uh, we're going to save it for you know we're just going to save um, it here so maybe test for blog and maybe uh, 01 per se now I'm just gonna save that as is now we've kind of got this file a file but we want to make sure that um, it gets up here now how would we do that now what I'm going to show you is that if we use a program called source tree which is here um, which I've got the icon for it here or should I say and I'm going to open this up now Currently, many of you will be asking what is source tree. Now, source tree is a communicator for, um, that uses Git, that we're going to use Git to communicate to this website. And if we look in the test project git here and you'll see that I've got a git repository now git repositories are used for websites and coding projects but I found that it's equally as valid to use um, git for projects with using Maya and other 3d packages um, so what has, what's happening here is that if we click on this un committed changes message up here now this is our timeline of the project now I've done a few testing a bit of testing for here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take drag this file here which is the file we just created in Maya here and pull it into the stage changes and effectively what that means is, is that if we push this or push this using this button to this repository it will actually uh, be able to share this use with some private users now we're just going to go commit now you can write your own little message here so I'm going to put um, uh, test for blog or got blog commit here now we're going to use now I've kind of got all this information here now before you kind of get to this stage here make sure it's saved in ASCII now the reason why we want to do that is because ASCII in itself is a very uh, how can we put this is you can easily debug it if you have mail knowledge and that's really really handy for us if because if something goes wrong we always want to be able to repair our files so I'm gonna go commit and at the moment 
we are going to push this. So essentially what we're going to do is we have, we're going to push this to the server so you can actually pull things down and push things up. Now I'm just going to push the push button, go OK, and we're just pushing right now. And, and if we look in our Bitbucket page, we're going to push F5. And wow, we have ourselves this blog commit 15 seconds ago, which is extremely cool because now we have ourselves um, a beautiful um, way we now we can push things up and down. So before I kind of move on to the different features here, now I just want to talk to you about large file sizes. So um, as we, if you're wanting to use this and you have particularly large file sizes, um, you may want to think about using the reference editor in Maya a lot more because essentially what it will happen is that your users who you basically use this um, pipeline will end up finding that there is too much um, to download or maybe things will go slower at their end etc etc so um, in that regard use the reference editor more often than you would have in any other circumstances so what I'm going to show you now is the now we've kind of got this file up here we as we can see we've got so many kind of different uh, ways we can track this um, so we've got overview which is basically recent activity source which is all the files so we can go into scenes and oops um, and we've kind of got all the files there we've got commits which show um, the timeline of our com of what's actually happening and then we've got our branches uh, which um, I won't cover here but um, it's a very cool tool that you can use if you want to experiment with the uh, pipeline. So you've got pull requests, and which I won't go into here. Um, and then you've got issues. Just waiting for it to load up. And where you can kind of create an issue or something like that. Now I'm just going to quickly kind of create a dummy issue so you can say... Um, uh, this is not working, which is pretty working, and you can assign to yourself. It's a bug, and chances, task, um, major, minor, or you can choose a file, and you can just say type text, and you can create an issue, which is pretty cool. And then from there, you've kind of got your wiki which if you want to kind of describe a method or uh, it's something that you want to describe to the team, this is pretty cool. So you can kind of do that. And if you've got any plugins that, that people need, you can include them in your uh, downloads section here. This is, and, and just imagine what you can use with this, with these tools all connected to each other. Now, the only drawback with uh, Bitbucket is that if you want to make your, um, projects private you can only do up to five users per repository um, before, otherwise it'll have to be public so just bear that in mind when you're using this now what can we do to take this one step further we can actually do something pretty amazing here is if we click on our command line now, at the moment, um, due to privacy, I'm just going to fill in out or fill in all my login information using SSH um, uh, on the other on my other screen. So, if in essence, what you will be doing is SSH. Um, now, I'm using a program called Open SSH for Windows. It's really 
um, easy to set up and once you've kind of got SSH set up on your on your server or your web server then it's really easy to kind of get this and get this good and start experimenting with SSH because SSH is so cool I cannot begin to describe to you how cool it is now if we wanted to log in to here so I would put like test and te test at te test site site dot dot com and that's what and that's how you'd fill in your SSH here but my credentials are different so I'm just going to pull it over to the next screen so uh, bear with me I'm just going to log into my own website uh, but due to security implications I don't want you guys to see that so just one second so while I'm doing this off screen um, what I'm it's pretty cool this whole setup is really easy to kind of set to uh, enact as it were so just one second I'm having a bit of problems my end so just want to give me a second Okay, so at this pull, so I'm just going to pull this back here. Now, essentially, what's happening here is is that I've just logged on to my server here, and what that means is, is that actually now I can go to um, my file. So I'm going to put so I'm going to go cd. And I'm, as you can see, I'm actually using Linux commands because I've logged into a Linux-based server. So if I want to put here, um, go into, say, cd ww, which is my directory, and we want to go ll, and, and what I'm going to do is I am going to go into my test, so cd my test. Now, if you now, I've already set this up, and so uh, this is already a Git directory. This is what, and I pushed this to the um, my server. And essentially, what I've done here is I've effectively created a, here a three-way system where you've kind of got your local files, you've got your repository files, which are closed but online, and then you've got your public files, which are up here. So mine is at tomrivel.com slash myatest, and you've got all the repository information here. And essentially what I can do now is I can pull... my changes that I've made in this repository. Now, if we go back to overview, this section here, HTTPS here, now this is extremely important. This is a, so if we wanted to pull something to the directory, you use git pull HTTPS, and then you've kind of got your project URL there. And then, so it's going to git pull your git URL, and I'm going to just simply put, um, and then I'm going to push enter. Now here comes my password. And we get all this information here, which is pretty cool. And this tells us it, uh, tells us that actually it has noticed that there's a new file, and it pull, uh, and it's pulling it to the uh, to the uh, my website here. So that's pretty. Uh, that's amazingly cool. Um, I cannot tell you how 
mind blown I was when I found out how to do this. So I will be putting this command in the uh, comments, but I but this is pretty much it in this regard. So what I have, well, just to kind of round off what I've done here, is what we've done is we've used source tree using um, using its embedded git uh, software to communicate with our project file therefore what source tree has done is it's taken all this information here and pop popped it up to our rep repository our private repository which is pretty cool and now using SSH I have been able to pull push this or pull this from he, from this particular repository onto my website so this is pretty cool because you can have like a, a private face and then you can have like a public face to your project and it's all pretty cool because you can publish it so that basically the client gets it or even if you've kind of got um, uh, or even or even if you've decided that you want um, some things to be uh, private but other things not um, and you can have other you can experiment with this um, and you can also use private repositories using Bitbucket. I've tried others like GitHub, but they, they're paid and we want to kind of keep the cost down. And yes, and it's all using the using um, Git. So it's really, really cool and exciting. And I hope that you guys are interested in trying this out for yourself. Now, this was not necessarily uh, a tutorial per se, but it was just kind of like a breakdown of how you could kind of go about placing all these files and setting up a pipeline. Now, if you really want me to kind of go ahead and do a full on tutorial of how to do this, I'm more than happy to do that, but um, I'd be more interested to see some interested parties first. But um, uh, also, one other th thing um, uh, to note is that the hardest part of setting up this process is using um, is installing Git onto your server, um, which can be a little daunting, especially if you're a first-time user of um, Git. But otherwise, I think that um, it's pretty cool to kind of get this done and. This is pretty much all I've got to say for this video, but um, before you kind of go, this was my first time doing um, recording or the, the video blog of this sort, so please kind of take it easy on me in the comments, because I because I'm still getting to get to grips with kind of like learning about how to do video blog production. Um, but this is actually all to do, uh, this is going to be put up in my lab section. So if you're here looking at, at it through the lab section, well, hello. Thank you very much for joining me at tomrevel.com uh, slash labs, as it were, or thereabouts. And um, yeah, so I will be putting um, this uh, in the... Um, I'll put, be putting this command here in the comments below um, and also I will also be putting a link to tell you how to install um, git on a repository on a web server should I say and so yeah until next blog this is Tom Revel signing out I hope that this has been educational for you to kind of see how a pipeline could be made using source tree, Bitbucket, and your own website, provided it has SSH enabled on it. But until next time, uh, keep creating, have fun, and yeah, this is me, Tom Rival, signing off. Goodbye, and see you next time.